All right, guess what people? It's time for another plant video. This is gonna be a quick one because it's my only day off and I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time. Uh, so we'll go through all of the uh, plants in my bedroom and I'm just realizing now how many I have. Um, as you can see by the palm outside of my uh, window, I live in the south, uh, which means that uh, I get great light through the windows even in an eastern facing window like this one. Um, one of the issues, and you'll probably notice that surrounding some of my plants that I've got some white powder that is actually diatomaceous earth uh, to keep the ants away. Um, I don't know if people are familiar, but ants uh, are great agriculturalists and they'll actually um, harvest or they'll, they'll, they'll uh, infect plants with uh, scale, like uh, scale or mealybugs, and then they'll harvest the sap from it. It's one of their favorite foods. And since I've moved down here, I've had such an issue with uh, um, infestations, and I'm uh, constantly prophylactically spraying my plants with uh, neem oil, um, and then I try to prevent colonization of the plants with uh, parasites by using the diatomaceous earth. So it's not the prettiest uh, thing to look at, but it decreases my maintenance of my plants quite a bit. Um, I, uh, I am an intern in uh, medicine, and so my time is very limited. <laughs> I get one day off a week typically, and I'm usually working 14 hours a day. So the last thing I want to do is come home and have to descale my plants every night. So that's uh, the reason I use the diatomaceous earth. Um, we'll start over here on the uh, table in the corner uh, here, and I'll just go through uh, each one. Uh, I got this one. I love this plant. I love the uh, the yellowed edges. This is a false Aurelia. I believe this is the uh, the gold crest uh, variety. Um, but if anybody knows differently, please correct me if I'm wrong. And there are a few plants here that I don't know the uh, precise names of, and I'm just going to use the common names for these. The ones that I do know the scientific names, I will uh, list uh, down below uh, so that you can Google search them if you want. Um, so that is my false Aurelia. Uh, you can see over here I've got my uh, arrowhead plant. Um, this uh, is doing pretty well. And all of these plants, I moved down here a year ago, so they've all, they're have all they all fairly new within the last year or so. Um, we've got my uh, Rex begonia here, and then this is a Peperomia. I think this is the teardrop uh, variegated version. Um, I like that a lot. I like the fat leaves. I'm a big Peperomia. Peperomia fan, as you can see from my uh, last video, that's my parallel Peperomia. Uh, this is the aluminum plant. Um, I'm going to cut this back a little bit because it's getting a little bit leggy. Um, typically when I cut the plants back, I'll try to uh, stick them in some water and see if I can uh, get them to root. And I'm a big fan of gifting to my friends plants. Um, this is my watermelon Peperomia. And there was a comment in the last video about how much I got this for at Amelia Smarty Plants. And it was actually $12, uh, so I know that the uh, um, other, uh, the money plant, the Chinese money plant, is selling like $40 for half the size, so I'm happy because I actually prefer this one. Uh, this one I really like. This is actually a coffee plant. Uh, this is the uh, the coffee arabaca. Uh, it's uh, the one coffee plant that's known for re producing really good coffee. Um, I have a couple in the other room that I picked up when I saw them because I like to give them as gifts because I find that they're a novelty. Um, we've got this dark purple beautiful uh, plant. This is the uh, Persian Shield. This is actually quite common as an outdoor plant here, um, but I like it inside because it adds a touch of uh, burgundy to my collection. And if you remember from my uh, plant studies, my plant uh, study uh, tour, I like the burgundy. Um, this is the uh, one of the only uh, pothos that I have. This is the uh, uh, silver pothos. Um, and it's doing pretty well. I don't know. I think it might not be getting quite enough sun here because all of the new leaves that it's been putting out are quite a bit smaller than when I got it. So this is an original leaf. Um, and maybe it'll get a little bit bigger as it matures, but uh, these seem to be a little bit smaller. So I might change the light a little bit with this. Um, I've got one of my uh, green and white uh, nerve plants. And then this 
is my friendship plant. This is Apelia. So I like that. I like this little display, despite the diatomaceous earth, because it, it's a nice variety of shapes of leaves and colors and uh, variations. So there's that. I'll just point to the corner really quickly. You can see there's my ZZ plant. I actually brought this down when I moved down here last year from the north. Uh, it's about three times the size it was when I bought it uh, three years ago. It is a slow uh, maturing plant, uh, but it likes it tolerates the, the darker corners, so um, I'm happy with it. And you can see poked up there, there's my lucky bamboo on the uh, lamp. So that's that for the table. And then we'll head over here to this corner. You can see I've got my purple passion up there stretching towards the light of the window. Um, this is about nine months old. Um, it's, it's happy there, so I'm happy that it's happy. Um, as you remember from my last video, uh, this is the African violet. Uh, I don't know the varietal, but uh, several more of the uh, flowers have blossomed. And I'm I'm happy. I, I like my little African violet. It's a I think that the flowers are pretty unusual because they're so ornate. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that I can uh, keep that alive. Uh, if anybody's wondering, the music in the background that's a, a indie, indie uh, group called Hem. I believe they're out of Seattle. Um, you can see my uh, fiddlehead here. Uh, I got this about five years ago when it was just three leaves. It's traveled across state lines a couple of times, uh, and uh, you can see there it's, it's stretching. Um, and as you can see from the way it extends out, uh, that I was not very good at rotating it when I was living up in Chicago. But excitingly, since I've moved down here to uh, southern Florida, you can see I've got two new branches. Oh. And then, if you look over here, can you see that? Oh, <laughs> I can't operate a camera. Uh, that looks like it's another branch coming out. So that's very exciting. Um, I didn't have to, I had tried when I was in Chicago to get it to branch before. Um, and you can see where are we? Right here is where I cut it off and I got one branch. <laughs> but the other one never branched so i'm hoping that this will uh come up to make it a little bit more tree like so but that's my my fiddle head head my pride and joy and then over here we've got a mix of polka dot plants you can see uh when i bought this uh about five months ago it had all three varietals and the one little uh like a four inch pot so I had the uh, the red, the white, and the pink. The pink seems to be doing the best. I've uh, pruned it back quite a bit, and each time that I do, I stick it in the, the clipping in water, and I'm able to root it and give it to somebody. Um, I like to keep a lot of my plants small because, as you can see, I like a, a variety of them, and uh, I don't have that much room. So that is my polka dot plant. Here, this is my Gollum Jade, uh, and you can see the diatomaceous earth on the uh, window. The ants get in through the windows, so I try to sprinkle it along the edges there to prevent them, and sometimes the, the, I dust the plants and the dusting gets everywhere. Um, this is my Gollum Jade. This is pretty new. I got this about a month ago. Um, it's not growing very much, um, but I'm okay with that. I, I do like the uh, ogre ears. Um, I find it a, a charming little plant. Now, bear with me. I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert in any of the plants. I'm not a botanist, uh, but I am definitely an amateur when it comes to succulents, so I don't know a lot of uh, these. I buy them really small, and they're often not labeled when they're that small. I've tried to do a little bit of research to figure them out. Uh, I'll uh, list the ones that I do know down below. Um, and if you want to fill in the holes uh, in the comments, I'd appreciate it. Um, but this one I do. This is the uh, the bear paw. Um, uh, all of these plants I got about two months ago. Um, little itty bitty, you can see I have some uh, propagated ones there. Um, and they're doing pretty well. I, I need to rotate this uh, little uh, planter box more often because they're definitely reaching for that window. Um, and this particular plant here, um, we have the bear paw. I think 
that this one is a sedum, but I'm not sure. So if you know, correct me. Uh, this one I do know. This is the uh, Blue Chuck Fingers. Uh, this has grown the most. Um, it was probably about this tall when I got it, and it's just shot up. I'm actually a little concerned that it's going to overwhelm the rest of them, um, but we'll see. Uh, this one I'm pretty sure is uh, Cressula, um, so a member of the uh, Jade family. This is uh, Hyworthia. There's one Hyworthia uh, that I really want that looks like it's just bags of water. I thought this one was similar to that, so uh, I got that one. It was cute. We've got this one I think is a Semper Vivum. It's got those sharp uh, pointy tips and the little uh, burgundy at the edge because I like burgundy. Um, I know this one is the uh, jelly beans. Uh, it was red when I got it. I'm not sure why it's not turning red. It's probably not getting enough sunlight. I may have to supplement it. I've been thinking about getting a little uh, um, grow lamp to hang over these, um, but we'll see. This this is a calancoli. Uh, they're uh, very common down here. People grow them outside. Um, and they're all different colored uh, flowers and you can see they've got those wide flat succulent like leaves with the kind of uh, scalloped edges. I've got my uh, crown of thorns. This is a euphorbia from Madagascar. Um, you can see I've got some uh, flowers coming out there. Here's one that's already existing. I really, I thought that uh, the Euphorbia was my favorite family, but then I was reading a little bit more of it and it's a huge family of plants. It actually includes the poinsettia. Um, but, and I was able to narrow it down to, I like African and Madagascar Euphorbias because they're succulent cactus-like. Um, although they're often mistaken for cactuses, they're not. Um, Euphorbia are known, and I'm sure if you have plants, you're familiar, or pets, you're familiar with the uh, poison, poisonous uh, poinsettia. Um, Euphorbia have like a, a sticky uh, poisonous sap uh, that uh, distinguishes them from cacti. Um, and they're just really interesting. They're thorns, pretty little flowers. Oh, and the flowers too um, tend to be really plain and little, and they miss the have absent a lot of like your traditional flower characteristics like stamen um, and with cacti they tend to be really big showy flowers so that's another way you can distinguish them. This is my uh, cyclamen. Uh, I've had this for a while. When I bought it I bought it at Trader Joe's in one of those tiny little one inch pots and I'm not sure. You can see that the new leaves are coming in green, dark green and rich but then they're getting really yellow pretty quickly. I don't know if I'm underwatering it, overwatering it, uh, if it's getting too much or too little sun. I have no idea. So if you've got hints, let me know. We got another succulent here. I believe that this one is a euphorbia. Uh, no, this one is a echeveria uh, succulent. And then this is, uh, these are cuttings from my uh, great grandmother's spider plant. Uh, this is probably fifth generation in my family. Um, I brought that down from uh, upstate New York uh, when I went to visit a few months ago. Um, oh, I missed, this is uh, my Montserrat. If, uh, I uh, lost my big Montserra plant. It got, uh, was unrecoverable um, from a, a mealy bug infestation but I was able to take some cuttings of it and root them, and this is one of them. And it's doing pretty well. Let's put out a few new leaves. And so those are my windowsill plants. And then here are my uh, chest plants. Uh, you remember my tiny dancers from the last video. We've got a classic chrysula or jade plant. This is my starfish. I um, It's actually even in just the week that I've had it. Let's see, you can see on this side, it's putting out a couple of new sprouts, which is exciting. This is an Aeonium uh, called the Black Rose. When it gets into bushes, it's got that long, thick, woody stalk and branches, and then at the end of each branch is one of the uh, the succulent black roses. So I'm excited to, I am excited to see this one get bigger. 
and another euphorbia. Uh, this is more most commonly known as the African milk plant. Uh, mine has the uh, the more burgundy leaves because uh, you know burgundy. And then here, this is my uh, Madagascar uh, Pachypodium, uh, the Madagascar palm. Again, <laughs> I like that plant. I've got my ponytail palm. This one, this is the one I need help with. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. Looking at the shape of the leaves, it really makes me think this is a Kalanchoe. But the way it branches, it hasn't flowered yet. Uh, I don't know if it will. And the way it branches out is reminiscent of the uh, Cressula. So, uh, throw out, if you know it, if you can identify this, let me know. Because I'd appreciate it. I have no idea what that one is. And then I have a Caladium with uh, gorgeous, oh, look at those leaves. Gorgeous leaves. They're huge. I like the Caladium. And then my rattlesnake, Calathea. And that's the plants. Oh, and my uh, Diffenbachia, the dumb cane. There you have it, people. Hope you enjoy. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.